besides uh, basically helping vertigo patients uh, which which is kind of the core uh, focus area where they started uh, they also uh, now working with uh, leading space research organizations uh, to train astronauts to train uh, air force pilots to evaluate and enhance their uh, balance system uh, so i think it's going to be a fascinating uh, session today uh, with uh, with the bhandari family so uh, without uh, much delay i want to uh, request uh, rajneesh uh, uh, to share uh, the screen please so good morning everyone and thank you narendra for the kind introduction and the invite to allow us uh, to give us an opportunity to talk about what we are doing we are in the domain of vertigo dizziness and balance disorders which affects over 15% of the population globally and we can translate this into 180 million people in india over 40 kinds of diseases of the inner ear and brain cause balance disorders we are working at innovation at the intersection of three domains medicine technology and design so one of the most uh, fundamental principles of innovation is the ability to unlearn in most cases the experts are not able to see the disruption coming i love to give the example of the google loon project which was started at the beginning of this decade the idea was to have huge balloons in the stratosphere to be able to be in internet to remote parts of the globe when the project was launched uh the the experts the balloon experts uh including the best balloonist in the world said that it was almost impossible because a balloon could not stay in the air for more than 3 uh, weeks the internet experts said that you know you are trying to beam from 20 kilometers up and what you would get is only a few kbps <clears throat> the project project was also ridiculed uh in magazines like mashable today loon has achieved over a million flight hours and more than and has set a record of more than 200 uh, days uh, for a balloon in the air and it has been instrumental in providing internet to far off places in peru and puerto rico during the natural calamities that happened in these countries the baggage of expert knowledge is what prevents uh, innovation from happening So uh, I'd like to take you through the journey of some of our product innovations. The inner ear is responsible for maintaining balance of the body. The some of the engineers in the audience would find it interesting to know that the inner ear actually acts as an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a gravity detector. Some patients who have problems in detection of gravity. perceive the world as tilted this is uh, tested by subjective visual vertical the subjective visual vertical was initially tested in the 1960s by a bucket test in which a bucket which had a black line painted on its bottom uh, was presented to the patient the patient put his head inside and was asked to turn the or rotate the bucket to make that line vertical now the true vertical was compared with the perceived vertical and this is what we call subjective visual vertical calculation various iterations and refinements have been done down the years and it has even been computerized and mechanized the latest iteration is a laser projection developed by a european company which costs around 15000 dollars and comes with a remote control <clears throat> so i was on a flight uh, long flight back from uh, us and i was dozing off and suddenly i had the eureka moment the test was a simple test to ask the patient to move a inclined line to make it vertical and then to see the difference between what the patient perceived as vertical and the actual vertical so the solution struck to me which was a simple powerpoint presentation 
with a black background and an inclined line which could rotate with every click and the slide number could be used to depict the subjective visual vertical so here we had a product which was simple to use which was just a powerpoint and was a, a replacement for a 15000 dollar equipment and met all the scientific requirements required so we strongly believe that adding features or stacking features do not help and what you need is a is a simple product for for solutions uh, <clears throat> a great example of a simple design is the amazon fire stick the most difficult part of innovation is saying no to a thousand things and choosing the the, the just the right feature that is required i'd like to talk about another condition which causes vertigo it's one of the most common causes and it is called bppv the inner ear has three semicircular canals which are filled with fluid sometimes a calcium carbonate particle from another part of the ear enters into one of these canals here you can see it depicted as the yellow ball when the patient moves their head it strikes the nerve fibers causing dizziness or vertigo now the treatment involves getting that particle back to its correct position we can use the analogy of using the maze this game puzzle in which the balls have to be brought by different manipulations back to uh, they have to be carried to the center so what bppv treatment involves is doing a series of maneuvers to bring that crystal back to the center it's often difficult for doctors to understand the three dimensional planes of these three semicircular canals when the head moves and for this various models have been developed you can see one of these uh, early models and over time as we saw in the initial example refinements have been made made it more sleek and presentable uh, a few <coughs> years back in switzerland uh one of the uh, labs they developed a 3d robotic model to understand the movements of these particles and yes it had a budget of uh, several thousand uh, more than hundreds of thousands of dollars so when we were thinking about the problem we came up with an elegant solution in which we created a simulation coupling the head movement with the movement of the inner ear now why did we require physical equipment when well, we could just use an animated simulation to couple both of these movements and understand how the inner ear was working we could move the head to all kinds of positions and see the behavior of the particle today this has become an acclaimed a uh, globally acclaimed uh, innovation coming back to the treatment of bppv as i said uh, earlier it is basically bringing those crystals back to their initial position and various kinds of machines and chairs have been developed to help doctors uh, perform those functions the europeans with their uh, engineering uh, prowess have basically been able to develop all kinds of chairs and again now our thought was what do we need to do basically the purpose of all of this is to map the trajectory of the head during the movement in three dimensional space and we then developed a miniature tracking device coupled with intelligent software and have been able to achieve the same results <coughs> so one of the fundamental things about our company <clears throat> has been to make find simple solutions for complicated or so called complicated problems uh this is the kind of uh, equipment that you see in balance labs across uh, very uh, specialized centers in europe or us like johns hopkins or or uh, harvard medical school and we have developed all these equipment from first principle basis uh the whole battery of uh, diagnostic equipment 
we have applied for six patents we have already been granted three patents uh, so we believe uh, that rather than a technology company at our core we're a problem solving company because technology centric companies try and find areas to use their technology uh, and may sometimes end up trying to build solutions for frivolous problems we on the other hand are open to use and adopt any technology that is best suited to solve a subset of the larger issue so uh, let's look at this so all our um, uh, equipment is 3d printed to allow for prototyping on the go um we use virtual reality and augmented reality for rehabilitation of our patients uh machine learning or uh, ai for diagnosis we also use computer vision in many scenarios like this one explained here so uh here you see uh, how we track torsional eye movement uh of the patients we've developed natural language processing um and along with algorithm for digital history taking next are wearables which have been developed for treatment of various uh, vertigo and dizziness uh, issues and then digital therapeutics for lifestyle management with a two way exchange of data between doctors as well as patients so drug interactions and contraindicated medicines uh, lead to over 100000 deaths which are totally preventable this is because there are over 7800 fda approved drugs and thousands of interactions between them which is impossible for the human mind to remember our algorithms prevent drug reactions in the prescriptions they turn up so medical experts often work in silos like you see here for diabetic care while what is required is a more collaborative multidisciplinary approach so our remote diagnosis platform ensures that multidisciplinary collaborative approach at neuroequilibrium we believe in imbibing and adopting multifarious technologies with a patient centric approach So while iteration is about doing the same things better, and experts are good at that, innovation is about new things. I think it is disruption which is important, which is doing things, new things, which make old systems and things obsolete. Focusing on product innovation is not enough anymore, and what is required is business model innovation. <clears throat> I like to give the example of uh, Apple. Uh, apple has uh, multiple products and uh, while uh, you know all their products are good uh, only a few have been runaway successes like ipod iphone and ipad and uh, you know when i ask people why uh, this is there most people say because apple is a great design company but that does not explain why some products have done uh, really well while others have not been market leaders this is a uh, this is a, a mobile uh, 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 video player which was there before ipod came in of course this is the first ipod that was launched which is uh, in 2001 which is a great design but i believe that the success of ipod was not just because of great design but because of itunes that was launched a few months before ipod which allowed uh, users to just download uh, one song uh, uh, or one uh, track instead of the whole album at 99 cents this is one great example of business model innovation the tablet pc was launched by microsoft in 2001 and almost 10 years after that and this was a, a failure and almost 10 years after that the ipad came in which was a huge success the reason again is not fundamentally design i believe the reason was both for the success of ipad and iphone was the launch of the app store in 2008 which saw a huge surge in the sales of 
iPhone going up and the and ultimately the success of iPad. Millions and billions of apps were downloaded in the next few years and which basically created an ecosystem and a use case for iPad. This is the famous uh, uh, quote by the CEO of Nokia that basically Apple and subsequently Android took the entire market share by because of building an entirely different ecosystem. So it is all about uh, business model innovation. And in that we believe that it is very difficult to be 10% better than our competitors. Uh, so if we have to compete with the, with the manufacturers of uh, our digital uh, diagnostic equipment, uh, we will have to compete with their vast network, with their huge resources, and with their years of experience. But it is much easier to be 10x better, to think uh, you know, in terms of multiples. And this is what we have done. We have changed the rules of the game. Instead of being an equipment player, we have basically set up a, a remote diagnostic uh, system where we have satellite clinics uh, on a revenue share basis. So instead of, instead of uh, uh, selling equipment, we are now a healthcare service provider. We believe that every product is a service waiting to happen. And that is what we have done with our domain. And so we have uh, exponentially grown in very short time to more than 125 clinics across India uh, with all the top marquee hospitals uh, under our name, uh, including Apollo, Fortis, Max, etc. We also have clinics in Cyprus and now we are expanding outside India. To, <clears throat> to, to create a, you know, a innovative company, culture of innovation is very important. And the last part of my presentation, I will talk about a few simple things which we have done to create a culture of innovation. One of the important things that we believe in is that brainstorming doesn't work. It would come as a surprise to you. There was a, a, a survey of CXOs, more than 100 CXOs that were done, where they were asked to list three top ideas that they got in the last one year. Then they were subsequently asked to list out what they were doing when they got those ideas. You will be surprised, but not a single one of them came in brainstorming during a board meeting. It was mostly that they were either taking the dog for a walk or having a shower or dozing off or in a long flight. As per neuroscience, it is almost impossible uh, to do uh, brainstorming and have people, 20 people sit in a room and then be able to figure out a great idea. History is replete with examples of the Eureka moment, which came when people were not actually thinking about that problem. This is a great uh, article uh, uh, by, uh, published in Harvard Business Review. Uh, which talks about why brainstorming doesn't work. The other thing that we do is to have uh, small teams working on multiple projects simultaneously. So the people could be working on, uh, you know, any, any one person could be working on multiple projects so that at the back of their mind, they have multiple problems to think over and that could lead to very innovative ideas. One of the things that we do is to celebrate failure. Uh, you know, basically, Esther Teller, uh, one of the top uh, people in, in Google, uh, he uh, has given a beautiful TED talk on why once we celebrate failure, it leads to better innovation. We believe that people are, uh, are, are less afraid uh, to try out new ideas, which may look ridiculous in the beginning. We do not believe in having rules uh, to make uh, our workplace look very efficient and very neat and clean. Uh, I think uh, innovation comes when people are free to do what they want to do. And we <clears throat> um, use a lot of tools that allow for experimentation, uh, including, of course, things like 3D printing, which allows for rapid prototyping. 
I think uh, <clears throat> we believe that a massive transformative purpose helps people align themselves and able to deliver much better uh, than their normal self. Uh, and our massive transformative purpose is to treat 100 million patients in the next 10 years. <clears throat> we also try to cultivate the culture of frugal innovation and believe that lim limited resources are in fact a catalyst for innovation, not a hindrance to innovation. We have internal teams which try to disrupt ourselves. Uh, if we do not disrupt ourselves, somebody else will. And I think as a young company, uh, we have already had third generation of products which have basically disrupted the first generation of, uh, of uh, equipment that we had developed. So I think uh, this is very important for us to be on the top of the game. <clears throat> I believe um, that the, 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 you know, the reason why we exist is to make a dent in the, uh, in the universe and to be able to make an impact on millions of lives. Thank you very much. Right. That was uh, such an amazing, inspiring story. It's a, <clears throat> it's a story of a long work there. Uh, I, I know how hard you guys have been working, uh, having some uh, visibility into some of the things that you've been doing. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's really inspiring. If you see the chat messages, people are talking about this story needs to go viral in India. Uh, or worldwide, uh, because all the amazing work that you've got, uh, done and the uh, the wisdom uh, that came out in your presentation, I think is just uh, amazing. So let's, uh, you know, I, I again want to thank every, uh, you know, thank uh, you guys on behalf of everyone for doing this uh, and coming here and sharing your experience. Uh, now let's take a few questions. Uh, let's uh, quickly go through. So. Uh, folks, if you have questions, uh, please uh, put it in the discuss uh, tab under the Q&A section and we will start taking the questions now. Uh, I see a bunch of uh, questions. So, uh, you know, Anita and Rajneesh, I'll just read it out uh, and you guys can answer that. All right. So the first one is uh, from Ankit uh, says, this is a, uh, this is fabulous. What inspired you to use such heavy technology in your area? So uh, I think, uh, you know, if you take a global problem and so we have 115% uh, of the population, uh, just 180 million people in India. And then uh, you look at how you can influence their lives. Uh, and as we said, and as Ria mentioned, that we are not a, a, we are not a technology centric company. We are not looking at having one technology, let's say virtual reality, and then trying to see what we can do with it. It's the other way around. We have a problem statement and there are lots of sub subsets of problems within that. And then we try to adopt the best technology to use for that. So I think that approach of being patient centric and problem centric rather than technology centric is what has helped us to Im imbibe multiple technologies in our domain. Great. Uh I'll quickly jump to the next question. So the next question is from uh, Sakshi. Uh, what has been your major challenge in this transformational journey? Uh, I ask this because I can think of a big list, but would like to hear from your experience. So I, I think uh, the major challenge has been, and I would like to, Dr. Anita to comment on that, has been that when we talk to the, to the specialist, you know, their reaction was that this cannot be done. And I would like uh, Dr. Anita to uh, yeah. basically talk about it. So uh, basically, when we started out, uh, Rajneesh asked me this question that how can you um, basically try to diagnose a patient who is not in front of you? And uh, that was like, uh, I, I just couldn't imagine. So I think if I cannot see the patient, I cannot talk to the patient uh, how is it going to happen? And then he's, we started talking about what do we need to ask the patient and finally develop a uniform, uh, basically a history taking examination and then so that we could replicate this at all over, uh, at all our places. 
uh, moving on next, I think there's a question from Sandeep. Uh, Sandeep is asking, uh, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, uh, but it's hard to achieve, uh, right? So simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, but it's hard to achieve. How do you ensure you think simple? So I think this is one of the mantras that we have in the company that, <clears throat> you know, anybody who comes up with a simple solution is is definitely, you know, talked about and in, in various ways rewarded. Uh, you know, we are not looking at complicated solutions. And every time there is a complicated solution that comes, uh, everyone has the right to question, is this the best? Okay. And I think uh, that culture of questioning uh, a, a complicated solution and having multiple having people work on multiple projects where they can think uh, unconsciously or subconsciously uh, about their problems has led to many of these uh, simple solutions to come out but i can tell you uh, from my journey that finding simple solutions is one of the most difficult things uh, in in terms of developing products Absolutely. I can I can vouch for that. So I did a startup with Rajneesh uh, back in 2011, uh, I think, uh, Adventure Labs, uh, you know, and uh, we were building, uh, we, we actually started as a, a company that wanted to focus on mental arithmetics uh, using Abacus. Uh, and I think we were looking at building a physical Abacus. We very quickly realized that that's a complicated solution to actually, you know, build an electronic version of a calculus uh, or of an ab abacus, sorry. Uh, and we shifted to an iPad based solution and we kept trying to simplify it till we said, okay, you know, this makes sense, uh, you know, from, from still achieving our goal, but not having to deal with hardware, not having to deal with a lot of other moving parts in the solution. Uh, so I think that the, the, the the drive towards simplicity, I think, is is very important. The other thing that I just want to quickly touch upon, which I think is a very important point that you've made, uh, is, uh, you know, some people refer to as set-based design, which means that, you know, if you want to... Uh, if you want to find innovative solution, you can't just have one team focus on it and just keep working at it. You have to run parallel experiments uh, and you have to try things parallelly and see what emerges uh, as, as a best of the class solution. Uh, I think not many people talk about this, even though this has been around uh, as a concept in terms of set-based design for many years. Uh, very, very few companies actually embrace this. You know, they, they look at it as a, a waste of, uh, you know, resources or things like that and, and want to focus on just, uh, you know, getting one team to focus on solving the problem rather than trying things in parallel. Uh, so I think that's, again, uh, something that I feel is a very important point worth uh, calling out that you need to do parallel experiments. And I think you've gone one step further saying not only do parallel experiments, but do the, let the same person do multiple things at the same time uh, and subconsciously let people think about how they want to solve the problem. Uh, we've all heard about the water cooler thing where, you know, you're trying to solve a problem. It's very hard to figure out the solution. You you step away, you go to get a glass of water or, you know, you uh, you just walk away and then suddenly it hits you that, hey, this is, this is the problem. Uh, so I think I can relate to that where you are trying to solve multiple problems and when you step back, uh, and look at a different problem, maybe the solution to the first problem becomes apparent. Uh, and I can, yeah, I, I see both of you nodding. So I think that's <laughs> that's uh, something at play as well. So that's that's great. Cool. Uh, quickly moving on, there are a lot more questions. So I'll try and uh, keep pace uh, here. Uh, do you, uh, so this is the next question from Vinaya. Uh, so do you uh, take different approaches for innovation uh, and for keeping, uh, uh, sorry, for delivery slash keeping the lights on kind of work? Or do you see it all part of the same whole? So do you have different approaches for innovation versus uh, keeping the lights on type stuff? Or it's the it's the same approach used for the whole thing? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> you know, basically, because we are from the startup background, I'm also an angel investor and as um as Naresh was mentioning, 2011, we did a startup together. So there have been multiple startups in, in, in my life cycle. I think the, the belief is uh, in something similar to Agile is uh, basically the MVP concept, minimum viable concept. And in that minimum viable concept, uh, basically in healthcare, that is considered almost impossible. But we have gone ahead and done that, that, you know, we have in, in, in some sense so. You know, the first product that this company sold was actually a PPT, as I as I showed you, correct? 
and uh, we have gone ahead and you know uh, embraced simultaneously both the development work and the production so it's not that something goes into production and then that's fixed uh, we we have continued the journey of innovation and iteration uh, you know along with production and we do not see these as two different buckets uh, sometimes it is it is it is difficult in terms of management um, but i think it is very important because the world is changing so fast the technology is changing so fast that if we do not have this approach we will become obsolete very soon in fact uh, companies in europe and us have this disadvantage that because of regulation uh, once they have a certain platform they just want to stick to it and keep selling for the next 8 10 years the world has changed nothing will be the same in the next 3 to 5 years so this 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 uh, you know platform approach of uh, making a, a, a r&d product and then keep selling it uh, i think the times uh, for that are gone very well said thank you uh, the next question is from uh, Vish, uh, wisma uh, uh, wisme sorry uh, innovation may emerge without brainstorming uh, but we still need brainstorming to fine tune the idea uh, that's a question that uh, wisme wants to know so i think uh, um what we use uh, some sort of brainstorming is to see what needs to be executed the next so a, a, a joint meeting is basically for execution uh, not to not to get the ideas we are very you know and i have worked with lot of people uh, you know as life coach also and we have seen uh, this happening in lots of teams that actually once they've understood that brainstorming does it help in generating ideas they have gone back and done much better in terms of innovation so having meetings is basically for execution uh, and joint meetings help in better planning of execution uh, definitely not in terms of uh, you know getting new ideas and innovative ideas and in that if you add simple ideas it becomes even more difficult i would say almost impossible and i just like to add something which riya always says no prototype no meeting so unless you come prepared for a meeting have something to add to it that is where uh, it really works love that no prototype no meeting right <laughs> <laughs> i mean most of us can relate to the folks who work in the corporate world that uh, we spend a large percentage of our time in you know meetings that are to decide when the next meeting is uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think uh, at least uh, in my experience uh, what we have seen is uh, you know if people don't come prepared to the meeting uh, the meeting is not very productive mm-hmm. and if uh, if we are using the meeting as the way where we are first going to disclose some information it's you know we take some time to process it and come out with good ideas and so you end up basically not getting to the point uh, you know if that's kind of how people think of brainstorming uh, so most often you know meetings are great for making decisions is what i would say uh, you know when you have everyone together you can make certain decisions jointly uh, but you know the all the data points for making the decision uh, could be you know thought through individually like solo deep solo thinking is kind of i think rajneesh you and i had talked about that uh, quite some time back uh, is very important otherwise you end up just you know in the name of collaboration or brainstorming just not not getting to the depth of the uh, a particular topic all right so we have one last question uh, which is from vivek uh, so how do you narrow down to a problem statement because there are so many problems where solutions are required uh, example in the medical field uh, you have so many problems how do you know which one to take so i think uh, the the few tick marks to do is one is it should be large enough problem to solve uh and the second so this is our checklist that we have the second is that uh, there there should have been new developments that would have happened scientifically in the in the last few years for us to allow a, a new science to be to be delivered through new technology so there has to be a new scientific basis uh and then we deliver through new technology uh and i think uh overall 
if you are in one domain there are so many subset problems that are there in that domain that so we are we are basically trying to solve the problem of um, vertigo dizziness and balance disorders and as you have seen we have been able to imbibe uh, multiple technologies to solve different problems uh, in in the same uh, larger problem that we have anything that you would want to add on this so uh I think you've said it all basically. So, yes. <laughs> awesome. I think one question that is there on everyone's head is sitting in Jaipur, which is not known as a technology-centric place. Uh, how are you able to uh, drive such an awesome innovation? So you know, uh, as we have seen, the world has gone virtual. uh and um, we are talking about jobs in india being created with people working uh, for silicon valley companies uh so i think we need to embrace this new reality what we have done in in our company is that uh, people who were working um out, outside jaipur uh, in bangalore gurgaon and all but were homesick so rajasthan people are quite homesick and we have been able to bring them back and work for us and they have done a great job at what you have seen uh, what kind of technology we have built so almost everyone who is working uh, in in jaipur uh, has their roots uh, in rajasthan uh, and uh, and they they are they are there with us uh, you know since since they joined the company and and i think it's been a great experience having uh, these people work for us uh, and, and do disruptive uh, technology development Cool. I think they're really happy being able to uh, get an opportunity to uh, do this kind of work at home. So they're they're ready to stay here. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that we always do in any meeting, uh, if you would like to call it brainstorming, but in any meeting, whether it is in the uh, in the sales department or in HR or you know a general meeting of everyone in the company, uh, we always talk about stories of how. patients have benefited and i think when the the software and the hardware people see that their product has been used to actually have an impact on how the patient has been benefited uh, i think that is a very very strong driver for people to give much beyond their 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 best and i think that has been what is what this small uh, group of people have been able to achieve in such a small time is because we we have the system can relate the direct benefit that the society is getting uh instead of it just being ppts and other things yeah i think you said it earlier that uh, the sense of purpose really drives people really motivates people and when they can see what they are doing the impact that they are creating it makes a very very big difference uh you know is that that's i think very awesome uh one last question the how long have you guys been working on this and how big is your team so we have been working uh, this is our fifth year now uh, since the company started but um, for the first one year there were only two people in the company so let's say four years we have been working on this uh, and uh, uh, the, the the development team and, and the production team and the development team is 45 people in the company amazing amazing 45 people driving so many different types of innovations this includes the production team so you know basically about 25 people in the development team correct uh if i think we have 2 minutes so uh, i'll ask one last question here uh and yeah i mean uh this this is the last question again i promise uh this is a question from uh ruchi uh which basically is talking about sometimes we talk about having a team dedicated to a particular problem or a product uh to be more productive uh having a team working on multiple uh, items looks like a contradiction to what is being followed in most agile organizations uh where you know in agile organizations they they talk a lot about focus and having dedicated people to a given problem so does this probe any risk towards productivity and solution framing so i think uh um, uh you know strangely we do not have a metrics for productivity in our company uh, and uh, i think we want to be that way uh, because we believe that innovation uh, cannot be uh, framed into e- efficiency and uh, and it becomes a, a dichotomy and uh, you know if we try to be more efficient 
we will lose the edge that we have globally our products have been accepted as being the most innovative uh, i think we do not want to go from there to be the most efficient company that is not our goal that is not our uh, vision uh, and we want to be more more disruptive and more unorganized so to say very very well said uh my uh, friend jeff patel is a photograph of the 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 uh, mess around the electronic bench that i showed you most people would not like to show that but i think uh, we are happy with that <laughs> absolutely uh, i was just about to say my friend jeff patel who's going to be doing a keynote uh, later today uh, he often talks about the difference between output and outcome and impact uh and i think uh you know a lot of organizations focus way too much on output measuring output you know focusing on productivity and not enough on impact and outcome and i think uh you know i see you living and breathing uh, the jeff patton's philosophy of you know impact trumps uh our productivity uh you know if you can show an impact nobody cares how productive you were because you can actually demonstrate that you had a tangible impact uh so yeah i love that i i wish more organizations and more leaders in organization specifically hear that uh because that's such a powerful mantra uh to to focus on productivity to fo- uh, sorry to not to focus on productivity and instead focus on impact uh and i think yeah it's it's awesome so thank you so much uh you know rajneesh anita and riya for uh, joining us today uh i think there are more questions yeah riya if you can just uh, come behind uh, your parents yeah. for a quick uh, yeah. let's let's do a screeny that's the new thing we don't have selfies now but we can do uh, yeah. so there uh, folks uh, let's do some thumbs up show the love uh, for the awesome work this team has been doing thank you thank, thank you thank you thank you <laughs>